Let's solve problem 2.34 for microelectronic circuits, 8th edition by Cedra and Smith. We're given this fairly complicated inverting op-amp circuit, and it's an ideal op-amp. And we want to start by just finding all of these labeled currents and the voltage Vx here. We don't know what this load resistance is. It is variable, as denoted by this arrow. So let's try to work from left to right because this is a little bit of a mess in the middle how can i find my current i1 well i know i have one volt on the left side what's my voltage at this node well this is an ideal op amp which means it has zero common mode difference if i drew a wire and created a virtual short there should be a voltage difference of zero volts between the negative and positive terminal. That's essentially what that means. And because the positive terminal is grounded at zero volts, this negative terminal too should have zero volts. So I can comfortably calculate my I1 using total analysis is just one volt minus zero volts divided by 10 kilo ohms, that is equal to 0 0.1 milliamps. Now, what's my value of I2? Well, we have another principle of ideal op amps. That is infinite input impedance. That means that the resistance going into both the positive and negative terminals is infinite. Because of that, I have zero current going through my negative and positive terminals. Therefore, all of the current I1 that travels into this node continues to travel through here. So we can state that I2 is equal to I1 or 0 0.1 milliamps. Now should I try to find Vx or I3 or IO? Well, let's see if we can express any of these variables in values that we already know. How can I express I2 with respect to Vx? I can do this using nodal analysis. I2 is equal to 0 volts minus Vx divided by the resistance of 10 kilo ohms. So this becomes I2 is 0 0.1 milliamps is equal to negative Vx divided by 10 kilo ohms. Therefore, Vx is equal to negative 0 0.1 milliamps times 10 kilo ohms, which is negative 1 volt. All right, now we can calculate I3. Be careful of noting that this I3 is denoted as traveling from the ground. So if I do nodal analysis, I'm going to start with 0 as my ground, minus Vx, divided by that 100 ohms of resistance. So that's equal to 0 minus negative 1 volts divided by 100 ohms. So that should be equal to 10 milliamps. Now, how can I calculate IL? Using KCL, I know that all of the current traveling into a node should be all of the current traveling out of the node. So I have I2 and I3 traveling into this node, and I have IL traveling out. So IL will just be I2 plus I3, so that's 0 0.1 milliamps plus 10 milliamps. And that is equal to 10.1 milliamps. So these are all the values that we wanted to solve in part A. So let me erase this, record my calculated values at the top, and we'll solve part B next. All right, let's continue with part B. I recorded all of the calculations from part A right here. So if VO is not to be lower than negative 8 volts, then we need to find the maximum allowed value 
for RO. So VO is going to be no lower than negative 8 volts, so we'll set it to negative 8 volts. We know uh, VX is negative 1 volt, and IL is 10.1 milliamps. So we know that IL is equal to VX minus VO divided by RL, and therefore RL is equal to VX minus VO divided by IL. So that'll be equal to negative 1 volt minus negative 8 volts divided by 10.1 milliamps. That's going to be 693.06 ohms. So this is the maximum allowed var value for RL in order to ensure that VO does not decrease less than negative 8 volts. Let me erase this and we will solve part C. All right, let's finish off with part C. Again, I recorded the answer to part B up here. So if RL is varied in the range 100 ohms to 500 kilo ohms, then what is the corresponding change in the load current and the output voltage? So how does the load current change? Well, remember how we calculated load current in part A, we used KCL, IL is equal to I2 plus I3. Hopefully you can see that I2 and I3 are independent of RL. So essentially, IL is not proportional to RL. It does not change with respect to RL. So regardless if RL is 100 or 500 kilo ohms, it will always be 10.1 milliamps. Let me record this down here. But you can probably expect that the output voltage will change. So how are we going to solve for that? So we know that IL is equal to VX minus VL divided by RL. So we can say IL times RL equals VX minus VL. Therefore, VL is equal to VX minus IL times RL. So you can plug this into your calculator because V out is essentially just negative one volt minus 10.1 milliamps times RL. And when RL is 100 ohms, I get negative 2.01 volts for V out. And then when RL is 500 kilo ohms, V out decreases all the way to negative 5,051 volts. So hopefully you can see how changing RL can make a drastic difference on your output voltage. And that solves the problem.